For six years you are to sow your land and to gather in its produce, but in the seventh you are to let it go and let it be. That directive comes from the Jewish Bible's book of Exodus and relates specifically to land in Israel. In practical terms, an agricultural sabbatical year or Shemitah in Hebrew means... It seems to be about letting the land rest. It seems to be about making sure that people are not overburdened by debt. And it also seems to presume that there is some wisdom for us in treating one year and seven differently. 12th century philosopher Maimonides said the wisdom of a rest year lies in increasing the Earth's fertility by letting it lie fallow. Research shows soil quality improves after a sabbatical year. But the no-plow directive was handed down thousands of years ago when very few Jews lived in Israel. In today's Israel of nine million citizens, observing Shemitah is tricky. If you lose a year, it can be a financial uh, uh, disaster. Does sabbatical mean Jews have to go an entire year without salad on the dinner table? Not at all. As with most things in life, there are workarounds. One of the workarounds? Israel's farmers sell their land to non-Jews for the year because the rule only applies to Jewish landowners. Purists don't accept that workaround. The very orthodox uh, religious people will not drink uh, Shemitah wine. The International Rabbinical Council also rejects workarounds by refusing wines produced from grapes harvested in Israel during a Shemitah year. The winemaker workaround for that stockpile and export kosher wines harvested and produced during non-sabbatical years. Purists and non-purists tend to agree a sabbatical year reinforces critical pillars of the Jewish faith. The heart of Jewish tradition is just slowly but surely trying to soften us and change us and to turn us in however small an ideally practical a way into striving to be better human beings and trying to create a better world for everybody. Stephanie Freed, CGTN, Jerusalem.